Thank you very much, um, Eldad. Um, and thank you, Tali, also for asking me to make a contribution uh, for this panel. Yesterday I had the opportunity um, to introduce uh, and present my museum very much more in detail. And you can imagine with such a topic, I will not succeed in 15 minutes. So I decided to focus on the question, uh, what can we do that the museum becomes a museum for all? And I will make it viewable at the, uh, with the example of the youth museum I'm working in, and I'm the head of for 20 years. So in today's Berlin, young people are growing up in a city that is more diverse than ever. People take for granted that they feel at home in various cultural spaces and traditions. Children and teens of diverse backgrounds go to the same dear case in schools. You hear this is different than in Israel. And there's a mix of families that may originally come from Turkey, Lebanon, Poland, the Ukraine, Serbia, and so on, or they belong to German old established, let me say, population in Berlin. Diversity today is a hallmark of a cosmopolitan city. And Berlin is proud of the fact it can itself, uh, that it can itself call uh, home to people from over 180 different countries. For centuries, Berlin has been a destination for immigrants of all kinds, and the energy has always enriched the society. Thanks. The number 180 also happens to be the number of museums and historical sites that Berlin houses. In the last few years, the subject of an increasingly diverse society has become of great importance to them. Since public cultural institutions create their exhibitions with visitors in mind, it was initially embarrassing to realize that certain members of the audience, those with immigrant backgrounds, were not at all represented in these cultural institutions. This forced to fundamentally rethink and change the habits in order to both accommodate and welcome the social changes that had taken place. This change let me see. Ah, I wanted. To, I don't forget my. <laughs> this change, says German immigration researcher Mark Terkesides, has become the key to survival for cultural institutions. However, it's not only the thought of underrepresented visitors that should make museums ask themselves how they can better understand and participate in the cultural development and the social societal changes brought on by immigration. Especially in German history museums, a general discussion has been sparked on how to protect and ensure immigrants' heritage, how objects they have brought with them are cherished, and how they can influence the continuation of our national history and identity. The German Muse Museums Association has recently published guidelines for museums on how to work with the topic migration and cultural diversity, promoting new, new strategies. There it is said, even if the museum for everyone remains an utopian idea, the museum for as many as possible should become reality. So, a new attitude is needed with multiple perspectives that represent diversity in society. It should work with and not for the audience. It should realize the need to be more open, to let go and not to hang on to your own pretensions of owning answers. If we are to believe the statistics in, in Germany, in 20 years, every second resident in Berlin and other big cities will have this kind of background, be it that they have immigrated themselves or as descendants of an immigrant family. This rapid growth is not only caused by influx and birth rate, but also by the simultaneous decline of the overage German population. For some, these prognoses are scandalous. You heard about it maybe in the newspapers. These are the people who want to think that multiculturalism in Germany has failed, along with all the inroads and models that have contributed to the successful integration of countless immigrants. Who belongs in Germany and who doesn't? When it comes to living together in diversity, we are far from being on solid ground. This question is heard more and more often, who belongs and who doesn't. Problems are only taken seriously when they rise to the surface. But they begin long before that, deep in people's hearts and minds. 
Personal experiences of exclusion and defamation always leave their traces, and this starts at a very early age. So how to face the situation in cultural institutions? Are museums places of cultural and intercultural dialogue and experience? And how in particular can they help children and families from many different cultural backgrounds to live in harmony? I would like to look at these questions from a perspective out of my long-lasting experiences at the head of a youth museum in the heart of Berlin. The Youth Museum was founded in 1994, in a time where a lot of children's museums started to exist, at least in Europe and the US, we all know they are much, much older. In Germany, it was a time when xenophobia had been on its first rise since the fall of the wall and had reached uh, its first apex with arson attacks on homes of asylum seekers. So one of our first projects was to start developing programs for children and youth in the neighborhood to initiate sensible dialogue between the cultures. Instead of taking the, talking with the children about a problem, we undertook historical exploration in the museum and the city itself, tying historical narratives in. History serves not only to widen our scope of knowledge, it's also a body of thought, bearing multiple perspectives and raising ever new questions. After these projects, we realized that more of such encounters were needed to provide children and adolescents of all backgrounds with a creative environment, where they could make learning and experiences together in various ways. In the museum itself, combining historical narratives with artistic forms of expression, and in the city itself, in historical sites, such as monuments or memorial sites. Born here, but not my history. In response to our questions, why teens of German, non-German descent should be at all interested in German history, we almost hear the same answer. Because we are born here and we want to know what happened here in the past. That we are talking here about the third or fourth generation children. That means they are born in Germany that they are all coming with a similar rudimentary understanding on, of history, and they are not so different from the children of German descent. There seems to be no special method necessary to address immigrant children, but this certainly does not mean that multiplicity in the group and multiplicity and a multiple blick, uh, um, uh, view on history can be left unnoticed. It's not enough for a teacher to know a lot about history, they also need, need to be culturally sensitive. A marked example of why a mul multiple perspective is so necessary can be found in the memorial days and in the way, which is a substantial part of the German culture of remembrance and in the way they are dealt with. Learning about the history of the country one has immigrated to is a widely debated subject in various institutions for the teaching of history. In 2005, we put on an exhibition on the 60th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, Time Zero, 2005, 1945. In the workshops, which were conducted beforehand, more than 150 students from various backgrounds had the opportunity to make historical research on their own and present what they personally associate with the Memorial Day and how they associate their own story with the big history. How did we do this? For example, kids got a box. Each contained a research assignment, fully equipped with materials a real researcher would need. An interview guide for the encounter with eyewitnesses, a notepad to record the results, a camera to take pictures, a contract in case they got an original object to present in the exhibition, and acid-free papers and cardboard boxes for private photographs and documents. After four weeks of research in the families and in the neighborhood, the students came back proudly to the museum with their full boxes, containing now letters, photos, diaries, objects. And most of these were linked to memories and a personal story, which they now could take as a starting point to step deeper into the topic and to use our historical archive. Who remembers what, how and why? Some of the kids didn't bring any objects. They were sad because they seemed to have failed. 
but they brought personal experiences which came along dealing with this topic. These experiences caused many questions and discussions in the museum, which were as meaningful as an object with a true story behind. I give you an example. From a 14 year old girl, um, which made interviews uh, in the city, she asked the pa Pakistani merchant uh, about the Second World War, and he answered, which war do you mean? Of course, she wanted to know what experience he personally uh, associates with the World War II. But for the girls, suddenly it was clear that the anniversary was not only an issue for Germans. It also awakens memories and peoples of diverse backgrounds, memories of leave-taking and new beginnings, but also often of war, flight and deportation. These people are now living in Germany and see themselves suddenly connected to the national way of remembrance. For the students, it was a remarkable experience. She understood why it is so necessary to be aware that the same historical event can be remembered differently and that other, other historical narratives might be associated with it. This is an approach we worked more with in other projects. Can we expect immigrants to take on the negative heritage of the German country they have, of the country they have immigrated to, in this case in Germany? The conscious involvement of young people from immigrant families in public remembrance and commemoration is essential. And in the German culture of remembrance, dealing with the Nazi period and the Holocaust is of central significance. Young people with migration backgrounds relate to the history of the Nazi area in the most varying forms. They don't do it all in the same way. And the connection they make between themselves and the history of Nazism is also varying. But they do, in one form or the other. One might, for example, identify himself with a historical victim and draw parallels between current modes of discrimination and oppressive mechanism of the Nazi regime. Someone else might willingly take on the negative historical heritage in this way, trying to qualify maybe as a fully-fledged German. In the History Lab 1933 to 45, we wanted to enable children and young people of all backgrounds to make historical inquir inquiries into the period of an, the Nazi period. Strong, you see at the wall, strong narrative and visually catchy comic strips and comic books, drawings, provided here the point of departure. The drawings introduced different themes and were linked to the authentic objects and documents and the exhibition. The purpose was to be viewed, questioned and studied exactly. As a research place, the history lab unfolded its correct effect first when it was actually used at one. And like in a proper lab, one could also make mistakes while experimenting and try out alternatives. For example, in the accompanying archive and a mysterious depot with a lot of other objects that were supposed to help deepen the children's historical investigations. Learning more about identity and the sense of belonging. Referring to my question from the beginning, are museums places of cultural and intercultural dialogue and experience, we have made it one of our goals in the Youth Museum to find the right ways of providing children and adolescents with ways in which they can take charge of their lives in a diverse society. For over 10 years, we have been working and concentrated on the history of immigration, working on it with young people and their families. And our most representative, viewable example in this context is the Villa Global. Oop, yeah. No, let me see, it was too quick. The Villa Global is not only an exhibition, it's an attitude towards a society where hybrid identities are a given fact, where people who feel they belong to several cultural spaces can change their identities as they fit. We staged a house or a living situation, the Villa Global, whose tenants are from varied backgrounds. They aren't presented as a problem group here, but as people who have belonged to urban society for three decades and who live here in this house next door to each other. You see a map of these 14 rooms. And the exhibition, yeah, 
And the exhibition 14 Little Rooms are created by involving 15 people of diverse backgrounds, ex ex experts, who now reveal the life stories with everyday objects, items and pictures. The Villa Global is made as a permanent exhibition and now the new heart of our museum. What makes a person interesting and what can children learn from it? In our search for the tenants, the background was thus, was thus less, far less decisive than the qualities that would make this or that person interesting for children and teenagers. What similarities could they see to their own lives? What are the differences? For example, Lila, her mother is from German descent and her father grew up in Lebanon. In her room you can read the following sentence at the wall, I'm Muslim and I have a Jewish girlfriend. No one can believe it. Let me give a last example. It's my favorite one. And it's the most loved room of all kids. He's a well-known rapper in Berlin and Berlin and many kids know him and uh, admire him, especially for Muslim kids, he is a model. He's smart, he looks great, and his text of his raps reflect the everyday problems of the youth. But when kids look around in his room, they can find out more about his life. And they will discover that his parents originally come from the Ukraine, immigrated into Israel, where Johnny was born. He lives now in Berlin. He feels as a Berliner, but he still has an Israeli passport. So the moment the kids understand where he comes from, they're shocked and they won't believe. How can such a fantastic rapper be Jewish? He must be Arab. <laughs> so the Youth Museum, which I've just told you about, and I'm finishing in a minute, <laughs> is a small museum. It works regionally and locally, but its potential lies precisely in the fact that its focus is so local and thus narrow that subjects connect directly to the target's group environment and that the small history instantiates the larger. It is narrow on one hand, on the other hand, the authentic experiences children can make will widen their view and change their perception. And the photo from the beginning is my last one. Homeland is where my family is, and they live in Berlin, wrote a boy named Ali above a picture at the end of a workshop day. This sentence expresses a sense of obligation towards the present and also an opportunity for the future, for Ali and for everyone who advocates the equal participation of all people in a democratic society. Thank you.